So if you guys aren't yet sick of classic Windows, we're going to visit another classic Windows OS, this time Windows NT351. Showed it off before on my channel, not you know in great detail or anything, uh, but no, this is not Windows 3.1 or 3.11, this is NT. So kind of related to the stuff I've already done, I want to go over a few more things, but again, they're pertaining to Windows NT351. Obviously, it shares similarities with Windows 3.1 in that it uses Program Manager, uh, but it's got a lot more things built into it. Control panel is a little bit different because it's got a lot more options in it, including this server service has not been started. That's fine. We don't need to use it, but you've got services. It's designed for, you know, the corporate world. So not many people ran it at home unless they needed to for some reason. But there's some things that I want to go over with it. One, well, one specific thing. And, uh, well, we'll take a look at it now. So, you know, it also uses file manager because that's what was available at the time. Uh, you do see this thing called new shell. And interestingly enough, there's something called explorer.exe. If we open it, it will not run. And that's because of the fact that we need certain things installed. I believe I already installed service pack five. Yeah. So that is there. So we're going to go ahead and continue with this thing called New Shell. Now, this is not Calmira or anything like that. This is an actual Microsoft release. And it's, how to explain it? It's basically designed to give you kind of like a preview of what Windows NT 4.0 is going to look like because uh, there might be compatibility issues with applications that have been written for 3.5.1 specifically, whereas NT 4 had a lot of rewriting done to it. I mean, it, it hasn't and it has like it's basically introducing the explorer and shell which you know comes with start menu and everything and the desktop and it's introducing it to the windows nt world for the first time microsoft wanted it to line up a lot more closely with their consumer versions of windows especially since you may have windows on the five at home and at work you go into the office and you're back to this old kludgy interface you know they, they wanted to try and line up everything a little bit more to be more consistent so so they released this little preview thing that basically allowed you to install explorer in windows nt and let me see why is it out of order here i'm gonna sort by name so we're gonna go ahead we're gonna get this installed here so we should be able to just run this i don't believe this is time bombed so it should just work Basically replacing system files, fonts, adding control panel options. We do have to reboot, so I'll reboot and we'll be right back. Interestingly, now it's showing NT version 4.0, service pack 5. A little odd, right? So now we're back at the login screen, but it still shows it's NT351. Obviously, that's just wallpaper, so it doesn't replace that. Let me go ahead and get logged in. And... That's got the 95 NT4 interface, and there you go. Start menu, desktop icons. Not sure if they're overlapping or if that's just how they're supposed to be, but whatever. So yeah, um, let's see. This looks interesting. It's still NT351-ish, especially since there's no options as well to change the wallpaper or anything like that. You can change color palettes, but... That's it, but let's go ahead and see Windows NT Explorer. That's different for sure. Let's open up my computer. It looks like 95, although the border is a little bit thicker than normal. Is that something that we can adjust? I don't remember. We can do custom pal, but we can't do. That's fine. I want to see this here. So this is reporting Windows NT as Windows NT 4.0. That's not right. It's supposed to be NT351. So it seems to update some of the system files to the point where it actually looks like and reports back as NT4 instead of NT351. But if we go here, even here it shows version 4.0. But everything else is, you know, going to be a mix of NT351 and NT4. So, 
I don't know uh, if any of you guys have experienced the uh, new shell uh, beta or demo, whatever you want to call it, back in the day when it first came out. Here you got under main, you've got print manager, so that being a control panel item. Here you've got different control panel icon. It's probably the original one that came with NT351. Still have one file, file manager. You know, that's not going away anywhere. Program manager should be here too, but obviously it's been replaced by Explorer. I just don't remember. It does not put a shortcut to it, probably for obvious reasons. Let's go ahead and see if I can't launch it anyway. And I can, and all the groups are still there, but it again gives you a Windows 95 or Windows NT 4.0 aesthetic instead of the 351 with the icons. So now again, what's the whole point of this? Well, the point is again, so you can test any custom written software or maybe even commercial packages that might be specific to 351 that may or may not work in NT 4.0. Uh, as I mentioned before, there has been some reworking of the code, underlying code in NT4, though it should still remain pretty compatible with 351 and other versions of NT. And so basically, they just wanted to make sure that their applications were going to work, especially if they're in-house apps, custom written, or maybe even just form a third-party vendor, although hopefully by then the third-party vendors work out any kinks and have released patches or updates or something like that. But it's also just to help you and maybe your users get used to the new interface. They do have the search utility, which is uh, same as NT4 and 95. They also have find a computer, which is an NT thing. And even the help, I believe, is based on <laughs> the 95 and NT4 help. But of course, it's not working correctly because, well, of course, it's not working correctly. Why would it? But everything else otherwise is pretty much the same. You've got the sync app, which is the briefcase, quick view, which is the search again, and uh, the group conversion. That's what converts program manager groups to start menu items. So yeah, everything is there. Interestingly enough, though, a lot of the files are hidden, whereas before they weren't. And I believe that's just because of that's you know, that's the default action for Windows NT and Windows 95. And I did not hit apply. And there you go. You've got, you know, all of the hidden stuff there too. But I wanted to see that the other control panel item that they added was the app wizard, which is something that was definitely, you know, new to 95 and 94, AKA add remove programs. So, and again, this looks like, the, in fact, the border around this is what I would consider normal, whereas this still is kind of just too thick. And I still have no idea if there's actually a way to fix that or not. Yeah, that's perfect. Although the border around the start menu and taskbar is still kind of, oh, no, there it goes. So that's probably more accurate. Now it's possible that they set it to three just to differentiate it so you don't think that you were actually on a Windows NT4 system. But just since I decided to <laughs> actually set the version as NT4. So, but I wonder what that's going to do to applications. Are they going to see that it's NT4 and not install? Or are they going to ignore it? And if it's an NT4 or a newer application, will it still detect NT351 and not install? I wonder if I have an application. I'll have to take a look and see. Does not support autoplay, although I don't think this particular disk supported either. Back to hiding that. And I just want to run Browse W. Looks like application icons aren't properly showing up either. Oh, here we go. WinZip for NT and Windows 95. All right, so it wants to install it to SQL and backslash WinZip, which is correct because there is no program files directory. Press the program group, added the desktop shortcut, and it added it there. So this seems to work fine. It doesn't, it even sees that it's running for Windows NT. So would that work in NT351? I have no idea. And I had a crash. Explorer crashed, and I cannot 
bring up uh, task list at all. So I'm going to have to reboot. At least it does seem to reboot properly. So we're back and I've got this driver disk that I made for NT4 so I can install some of the drivers for graphics card, sound card. Let's see if they detect this as Windows NT4 or not. I think it'll be interesting to find out. Uh, NT USB support. I don't have USB ports, but let's see what happens. Oh, it's for, from Dell. Look at that. Sure, why not? So far, it's not stopping me, but I think this specific Dell installer doesn't really check for operating systems because you could be running on an unsupported operating system so that you can install it on a supported one. We go to Dell drivers, setup. Okay, it just flat out did nothing. So that's a no go. Let's see what's under here. ATI, that's for the video card. That's probably not going to work, but let's see what happens. So far, so good. So far, it's not stopping me. Interesting. Oh, I don't want to mess with that because I have a driver currently that's working. So, is this another one? That's installing. It's not complaining that it's not NT4. No. We're going to return because I want to try something else. So that should be for the Sound Blaster card. We'll just call it SB32. And cannot be found. Set up api.dll. Wonder if I can get a copy of that file if it would work or not. That doesn't work. Oh, that launches though. But apparently USB support. Let's go ahead and restart. And I'll be right back. I'll see even the shutdown menu is uh, 95 style. And we have a crash. That right there is for the USB. So it does not, in fact, work. So it installed, but it didn't really stop itself from installing, not realizing that it's not NT4. Go to reboot and we'll see if we can't do last known good configuration. See if that works. Otherwise, this experiment is over because I don't feel like reinstalling Windows NT again. So I went ahead and uninstalled that USB stuff just to be on the safe side. I have Half Life. I think that's an NT4 or 95 or newer game. So let's see what happens. And if not, I do also have Unreal Tournament, which specifically specifically says NT4 or 95 or newer. Sure. No. Yes. And we'll come back when this is done. So if you see this here, it's detected a start menu. But did it actually do anything? It did not. DirectX must be installed. That'll be interesting. 
So it did not, in fact, install it into the start menu folder because there's nothing here unless it is under common. Nope. Main. Nope. So there's partial detection. But the thing that's interesting me, of course, is the fact that it needs direct X. Let's see if that installs. Apparently it's already installed. Must have been installed with Half-Life. Nope. Oh, okay. Somehow I don't think it actually installed. So we're going to have to run it the manual way. And there we go. It does not work. But let's see if Unreal Tournament does. Of course, we may have to install the entire game before we find out if it's going to work or not. And this game is very slow to install, especially on a 6x CD-ROM drive. And we'll be back when it's done, or... Oh, there we go. Source medium may be bad. No, because that would be... Oh, I mean, it's possible. This is an old CD-ROM drive. Let me check to see if the disc is maybe scratched. No, it looks good. We'll try again. Nope, same thing. Oddly enough, now I have installed this before from the same disc on the same system, just under Windows 95 for a different video. So I know it works. So it could just be a compatibility issue. But there you go. Half success, half not. So some programs don't seem to care that it's actually NT351. They install, they run. Some of them will install but not run. Yeah, was this whole pointless? Probably, but I figured it'd be a little bit of fun and kind of in line with the Helmir and the Win32's videos that I've done already. And I figured you guys were kind of sick of Windows 3.1 and we do something a little bit different. So if you guys have any experience with the new shell experience with NT351 or any NT351 experience whatsoever, uh, let me know in the comments below. And otherwise, thanks all. I'll catch you later.